Avenger Oshkosh 2018, and we wanted to look at a new engine from a company that's created a lot of excitement in recent years. This is Viking Aircraft Engines. I'm Dan Johnson speaking to Jan Egenfeldner, and you're going to tell me about something a little different here than what we've looked at before, right? I will. What is this? It just, well, it is a three-cylinder, 90-horsepower engine. Three-cylinder? Three-cylinder. It's it's a Mitsubishi engine. It starts Mitsubishi, as a Mitsubishi okay. engine, and then it's made into an airplane engine uh, by Viking Aircraft Engines. That's what we do. We take uh, small uh, production engines and turn them into airplane engines. Now, normally I've associated your brand with the Honda base engine. That's true. You know, uh, Honda has four cylinders. We've done 130 horsepower and up from there. A lot of people fly smaller airplanes than that. Ah, you know, okay, so the, the, the Zenith 6, I mean the 701, you're looking at the little uh, Highlanders and and the, of course the 912 Rotax is on every airplane out there. So it makes sense for us to look for an engine that kind of matches that weight, matches that horsepower and that's what we did with this one. Uh, um, being liquid cooled and an automotive derived engine, having a four cylinder is just not going to cut it as far as weight. Uh, to compete with that uh, finely designed uh, Rotax 912. So we ended up with a three cylinder uh, in line and then now we are actually at the same RPM, same horsepower, same torque, a little bit less money. Yeah. Okay, well yeah. that sounds like a good combination. People are always <laughs> price conscious, yeah. as they should be. You yeah. need to shop carefully when you buy these things. But So weight-wise, power-wise, you're pretty comparable to the 9 Series Rotax? Yeah, we're uh, basically uh, taking an engine that weighs 123 pounds, uh, adding a reduction drive and a radiator and an alternator and an exhaust system, which then brings it up to 150, and that's very compatible um, to that. And then. It's important for us to do a dyno run on these engines, so okay. uh, hopefully we'll be able to zoom in and see that in this video. I'm not sure if, uh, what the camera will pick up, but, but the dyno uh, curves and the horsepower curves that was carefully done was then overlaid on available information on the internet as far as the rogue tax, since we're trying to compare with that. And we have those three curves between the 80 and the 100 rogue tax versus the Viking 90, uh, both the horsepower and the torque. Uh, and it looks real favorable. It's, it's nice. We like Good. it. Good. Yeah. So, so this is. Give me some of the basic parameters. You suggested 90. Is that 90 horsepower from this engine? Yeah. It's okay. 90 horsepower. The torque curve is a little bit flatter. When people look at that, they can, you know, kind of de decide uh, if uh, 80 horse, 90 horse, 100 horse. You know what they want, how much they want to spend. And uh, of course, this is for home built experimentals. It's not a certi certificated engine like the Rogue Tax is. No, we understand right. that. We have, right. But we've got a lot of players in that space, and right. you've been serving that space successfully for some years now. All right. Go back in history a little bit. How long has Viking Aircraft Engines been around since I mentioned well, it's that? Well, like 10 years now. You 10 know. years? Okay. Uh, personally, I've been in the auto conversion business since uh, college, and I'm 51 years old, so, so <laughs> that's been a while. So that's a long time then. <laughs> yeah. You don't look that way. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And as far as a little bit about the engine, uh, yeah. um, you know, the, our, our reduction drive that we've been using for years, even on the bigger engines, uh, we put it on here because we want people to feel confident that uh, you know now it's only 90 horsepower for us. That's uh, less than what we're used to. Yet the reduction drive is is designed for quite a bit more than that. Ah, okay. So yeah. the same one is on 130 horse. Then. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you shouldn't and be overstressing that at no, all. No. 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 And then uh, other features about this little Mitsubishi is. Uh, it's got the uh, variable cam on the intake, but not on the exhaust, which... And what does that mean? Well, the, the thing that's nice about it is when you tune the engine, you're able to, and particularly for a three-cylinder, you know, you would think a three-cylinder would be very lumpy. And it's not because you're able to then man maneuver or change the camshaft, just like uh, here in America, you know, I came from Norway, but... Uh, uh, what I learned when I came here about the big muscle cars was that the thing to do was to change the camshaft, right? Either you had a lumpy idle and lots of power, or you had a smooth idle and no power. <laughs> and of okay. course, this, this does both. Okay. And, uh, and it enables a three-cylinder to run as smooth as a four-cylinder. Between that and uh, counterweights on the crankshaft, uh, Mitsubishi has made a, a smooth three-cylinder engine. Okay, so a new production Mitsubishi engine, and they've done a lot of work to make sure it's a well-refined engine for their automobiles. Of course, they don't 
worry about what else it might be used right. for. But uh, give me some of the uh, parameters of the engine, uh, like uh, how fuel is fed to it, and some of those things. Right. Well, it's you know, as far as you look at a spec sheet on this, you would see that it's a 1.2 liter engine. 1.2. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it produces its power at uh, peak power at 5,800 RPM. Cruise okay. at 54. Again, very like the Rotax numbers. Same, same deal. Um, it uses fuel injection. It doesn't have uh, a direct does. injection like the Honda Fit engine, but it has port injection, meaning the the fuel is injected into the intake manifold, and then the piston, the valve opens, and it draws it into the cylinder. Obviously, compared to a, a direct, goes right into the cylinder. cylinder is that yeah. correct? It's this goes into a manifold and then into the cylinder. Right, right, okay. into individual manifold runners. It also happens to be the most fuel efficient uh, non-hybrid car in the country. Uh, is that right? So the engine is extremely fuel efficient. Oh, well, yeah. another thing of value to a lighter aircraft, exactly. which probably carries less fuel with it, right? and is hoping to use that fuel more sparingly. Right? Also, the engine is standard with the, with the nip and dense of 40 amp alternator, so you, you don't have a, 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 a smaller uh, alternator and then a rectifier. You basically just go directly from a heavy duty uh -huh. alternator on the engine. Um, That's a lot of power out there. Well, you know, uh, between doing that and reducing current consumption, like we now have a very sp small header tank with only 1.6 amp draw of each fuel pump, oh. uh, and people putting glass panels in and everything, now you know it's not so critical anymore that the engine kind of needs electricity to run. Yeah, you know, so you've got some to spare to run these extra. other devices. Right. That people right. got to have anymore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Other than that, as far as the engine, you know, it, we love flying and it. it's nice and smooth. It doesn't require... How long have you been doing, uh, working on this engine? Well, it's a new project. It's okay. the last six months. Okay. Yeah. But and you've had it in the air already. Flying it in a 701 in a every 701. day. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, so uh, if it's that new a project, how soon is it available for customers? There's 12 of them being built right now. Okay, so you're, yeah. you're in the process of delivering the first ones, I gather. Yeah, we're actually in the process of making firewall forward packages. But every time a new engine comes out, you know, now we're looking at a, a really neat engine for the RV-12 because we know that it needs a light engine because you sit ahead of the spar. Um, we also know that that's an excellent airplane. The only thing is that for some, the firewall forward a little bit pricey. Uh, but the rest of the airplane, the pricing, the quality is superior. Now there's a, an engine that actually will work because it's light and powerful. Sure, yeah. I so, bet a lot of people didn't know that about the configuration of the RV-12 that suggests if you put a great big heavy engine up there, it's not the right you're going to do in that problem. airplane. Yeah. And then of course the 701s and the derivatives of that, and you got you know the Escapade and the small Kit Foxes. Anyway, everybody's using the 912, so we're trying to get into that uh, market. Good, good. Yeah. Well, you've served the higher power desired market for right. some time with your 130 horse engines and more. Uh, but there is a whole market out there. There's a big market out there of those that don't need all that much power. Right, and we don't but travel. But do like fuel efficiency. Exactly, and we don't. You know, personally, I'm from. A, I used to travel a lot, but I don't so much anymore. But we know there's a big world out there where uh, fuel efficiency and small engines. That's all they can use because it's not America where you know where we kind of have bigger stuff. Yeah. You know, and we have lower fuel prices. Yeah. So, so, so we don't have rules to, about how big a home build can be. You know, you in can Europe, sell this outside of the U.S. as well. Then. Uh, yes, anywhere. And, and yeah. you expect to. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, great. Well, uh, give me a little bit of uh, just touch on the rest of your line so that those folks that are seeing this and are hopefully excited about this go, yeah, that's great. I'm, that's neat that it, they're doing that, but what I really want is one of the ones I've already heard about. So give me a quick review of the rest of the line that you've got. Okay, we got basically three engines. Okay. <clears throat> this is the new, new guy. Uh, and uh, then we have two Honda models. We do the Honda Fit, which is 130 horsepower. Okay. Uh, very popular with the Zenit crowd, you know, 650, uh, You've done a lot 601. Of those, yeah, you? yeah, yeah. That's just the right size engine for that. And then we also do uh, the uh, 180 horse, which can be 150 to 180 because it's a boosted engine, and we can program how much boost ah, you put in it. Okay. And that guy is now flying in our uh, Super Duty, uh, also Zenit Super Duty. Yeah. And he, we're going to take that up to Zenit now in the fall. We're looking forward to going to their homecoming. And uh, it's a, we we love that plane. It's a, you it's usually a, it's, do pretty well up there. I yeah, know, but so. that, that 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 Zenit Super Duty we built. I mean, I'm happy with it. It's it looks cool. It's flat black. I mean, so so we're looking forward to that flight. Me and my um, my uh, office manager and girlfriend Alyssa. 
Uh, that's okay. the other thing that's new in my life. I have a All significant right. other. Good for you. Yeah. So So you're both going to take a little trip, go up from Florida to yeah. uh, Mexico, Missouri, which is a pretty good flight. Yeah, and we're looking forward to that. All right. Well, good deal. Give us a web address, Jan, where we can find out more stuff about the 90, the 130, the 180, and everything else that you do there at Viking Aircraft Engines. Well, it's vikingaircraftengines.com. There you go. Pretty, yeah. sort, pretty straightforward. That's it. More about this engine and all the aircraft they go on and all sorts of affordable aviation available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Jan and myself here at AirVenture Oshkosh.